Today I'm getting out my sketchbook, opening it up, and preparing to illustrate a drawing that represents how art has helped save my life. I'm using this chameleon marker outliner to, I suppose you could consider it a thumbnail sketch, to get the basic idea of what I want for this drawing. While I'm drawing, I'm going to explain to you all what exactly this drawing means, what it represents, and how exactly art has helped save my life. It's the Lily Factor. Ding! When I was in third grade, on the very first day of school, my teacher gave out a writing assignment for each student in the class. Since throughout the year, we were going to be mainly writing stories about our lives and nothing fun or fictional, really. She decided that it would be fun for the class to, for our very last time in school, to write a fictional story that we made up. Now, in the school I was in before that school, around when I was in second grade, I used to love drawing comics with my classmates, and we would make these hilarious stories, well, hilarious at the time, and we would get to read them to the class. And so with the teacher promising that she would read each story out loud to the class, I was overjoyed. So the first thing I did was I started illustrating out my panels to make a comic. Now my teacher started walking around the class, making sure, you know, everyone's doing well with what they were writing and having a good time. And so she walked over to my desk and looked at my comic. She paused for a moment and then looked up at me and said, Okay, could you write a summary on the back of the paper? I can't really read what the speech bubbles say. And I know I said you could write whatever you wanted, but I didn't mean a comic. You see, comics and cartoons are for babies. You might have done those in second grade, but this is third grade now, and we're not going to be doing any of that because they're for babies. And without realizing it, I stopped drawing comics after that. I stopped drawing comics and cartoon characters. It really just, it like, I just stopped. And I never really realized how badly that had, that just what that teacher had said to me affected me until about a year later when I started homeschooling. Because throughout that third grade year, I endured a lot, just my dad was in and out of the hospital, I was bullied, and my teacher was awful to me, and I was just really depressed. And so by fourth grade, I was just, I was done with everything, with life, with, with public school, all of it. So I became homeschooled, and one day my mom had to leave for BSF, and she was like, look, your school assignment for today is just to draw something. I, I don't care what, just draw something. And I had never been considered an artist. Everyone knew, because at the time my sister wanted to be an artist. Everyone knew like, oh, my sister is gonna be this big artist. And everyone like always told me that I wasn't good at drawing. And I mean, I never took it personal and they didn't mean it in a bad way. It was just something like we knew it wasn't my, I wasn't gonna be an artist and so I sat down and I just I started drawing and I drew myself in this um, art style of this cartoonist who I really liked she had the style that at the time I was in love with and so I started drawing myself in, in her art style, though it didn't really look like her art style, it's what I thought was her art style. And I kept drawing and drawing and I started to fall in love. And it came to the point where I realized that it was my passion and not drawing per se, but the characters behind it, the storylines, the comics, I realized what I was meant to do. I was meant to be an animator. And I knew at that point that that was my reason for living because I was in such a dark place that animation, cartoons, it, it just brought me out of it. And I knew that that was my purpose and that was a reason to be on earth. And so 
I eventually got out of my depression and I started drawing and drawing and I got better and it all changed. And so I proved that third grade teacher wrong, but I just wonder how different things would be if she hadn't have said that to me. And if, uh, like, would I have ended up finding out I wanted to be an animator if she hadn't have said anything to me? So I have no regret. I don't wish she didn't say that to me, even though it hurt, she hurt me so bad with so many things. I think in the end, what she did was she did me a favor. And one little thing real quick before I dive into what I'm drawing. My teacher also promised that she would read all of our comics to the class throughout the year. And months went by and I noticed that my comic had not been read to the class. So I asked her, I said, why hasn't my comic been read yet? And she goes, it hasn't? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought, I thought I did read it. Um, I will read it next week. And I'm like, okay, great. Months go by again, and it still hasn't been read. So I go to my teacher and I ask her, why hasn't my comic been read yet? And she goes, well, I was going to read it to the class, but then I lost it. I couldn't find it anywhere. I don't know where it is. And I was like, oh, well, that's too bad. And she's like, yeah, well, I'll let you know as soon as I find it and I'll read it to the class. And I was like, Okay, great. By the very end of the year, she handed out each of the students papers, projects, things we had done throughout the year. And she walks over to me and she hands me that comic. So I looked up at her and I said, why didn't you read this to the class? And she goes, I didn't? I thought I had. <laughs> yeah, so this drawing represents me when I was that age so about eight or nine years old and I really wanted to catch each core thing that was always that's how you would recognize me when I was that age so at the time I really loved to ride my bicycle with my dad he and I would get up early in the morning on the weekends and we would ride our bicycles around the neighborhood and we had a really beautiful neighborhood so it was fun to do that so i drew my younger self riding on that bicycle i don't really remember what my bicycle looked like at that time so i just kind of made up the bicycle as i went and then i drew an outfit i really <laughs> remember well surprisingly it was this really baggy purple shirt with these purple shorts and I just remember that outfit so well that I was like oh, I'm gonna draw it because at the time I only wore baggy t-shirts and athletic shorts or biker shorts and then to tag along with it I had these tennis shoes and I remember them so vividly like they were my favorite shoes they had orange purples pinks and yellows on them and I was in love with those shoes so I had to draw those shoes with that outfit last but certainly not least was my sideways ponytail with a bow I only wore that hairstyle for probably two or three years maybe <laughs> I just that was my favorite hairstyle it was so comfortable it was easy to put up so there's that <laughs> As you guys have seen throughout this drawing, I started with some thumbnails and I did this huge sketch of it, but I didn't like the angle. It wasn't what I had thought up in my head. I ended up trying to do more thumbnails to make sure I really had the right idea. And I ended up with this drawing that I did like. So I'm doing the line art here and I used some Stabilo outliners. I'm hoping I'm saying that right and my chameleon outliner last but certainly not least my bic intensity outliners i had a lot of fun with this drawing i really doing the sketch of this particular drawing i didn't think it was going to go very well and 
the paper wasn't taking my eraser very well. It just kind of spread around the pencil lead, which was weird. The sketchbook is like the paper has good days and bad days. It's really odd, but some sometimes the paper works really great with me. Then other days it decides it's going to be my mortal enemy. Even though throughout the drawing, even at the line art, I was looking at it and I just, I didn't think it was going to be any good and it wasn't going to meet my expectations. But the story of my life, so to speak, just kept going on throughout my head as I was drawing and outlining. And I thought, well, if I'm still here today and I'm now <laughs> into art and animation and stuff, I didn't my nine-year-old self never would have thought I'd be into. I shouldn't give up on this drawing because I didn't give up on myself. So I didn't give up on the drawing and I have no regrets. <laughs> I'm pretty much almost done with the outlining, but I'm moving on to the buildings. So the first building on the left, I wanted to make sure it was very rigid, that the Everything was like really straight and dull and dark and boring and that the other building is kind of geometric and it's going to be colorful and kind of whimsical. The reason behind that is because since that character is me, the drawing represents that I am riding my bicycle out of this darkness, this state of depression and no creativity and no inspiration. I'm riding my bicycle out of that terrible place into this world of color and creativity and just fun. And you guys are going to be able to see that more once the color kicks in. But this drawing is really me coming out of this dark place through art. I definitely suggest doing art, even if it's not your passion or your you don't think you're good at it. I didn't think I was good at it, and I certainly didn't think it was my passion, and here we are. That may not be the case for everyone, but it was for me, and I have no regrets. No regrets in life whatsoever. Here comes my favorite collection of markers, the Copics. I'm starting to ink on my skin tone, and I started with one skin tone, but I guess it's running out of ink. And it didn't really match me anyway, so I moved on to a different color. I think it's E0000. I don't know, there's a lot of zeros. And I'm kind of just blending in the skin tones. I typically only use two or three um, colors for skin tones when it comes to Copic markers. And mainly, the one color is the base color for my skin, and well, for the skin, but in this case, my skin. And the other colors for kind of the shadows to make it more soft and rendered looking. And on the rare occasions I use the third skin tone, it's typically for blush. You can see now I'm adding in with my Pit Artist Pen, the kind of gray bland color there on the backside of me to kind of represent me coming out of that terrible, terrible place. I'm sorry, I love my shoes there. <laughs> I really think I was able to recreate my shoes to how they looked. It was kind of fun drawing these arch support heels because I just love that big clunky look they have. It just brings back so many great memories. And uh, those shoes, I, I was just so happy to draw them again. It was like, I own them again. <laughs> I miss them a little too much. Uh, but they're just the colors, they're so much fun. And I was really happy that I was able to find almost a precisely matching color for my shorts. Although the purple was kind of running out of ink there too, but I can't always say that it's because of the ink being low. Because like I said, the paper is hit or miss. And especially with Copic, sometimes they work fine on the paper. And then other times they just are just 
really weird with the paper and I can say that a, there was a little bit weird but not too much because I've had weirder cases on this paper with Copic markers than others. I'm coloring my tank top underneath my really baggy t-shirt. I wasn't able to draw what's on the front of the t-shirt which kind of makes me sad but I really remember that t-shirt. It was like this VBS t-shirt with this palm tree on it. I just, I don't know why I remember that so well. I'm not sure if I loved the t-shirt or if it was just I remember it because I liked the design on it, you know, the animator in me, but <laughs> I just, I vividly remember that outfit and that light purple bow that didn't really match along with those multiple shades of purple. <laughs> I'm adding more gray onto the sides of me now and shading a little bit more on my face, but I'm fixing up. I think there was some ink that kind of got on my skin tone, so you'll see me kind of go over it with, um, I think at first marker and then pencil, but I'm also adding blush to my nose, my cheeks, and a bit of my knee and my elbow, I believe. And now I am coloring the bicycle with my Pit Artist Pens. I don't have any gray Copic sketch markers, so I like to use my Pit Artist Pens. And I think they're really great. Um, I'm not sure why I'd get um, gray Copic sketch markers, because the Pit Artist Pens just work so well. They blend so nicely together and they have so many great gray shades that I can get together that just look exactly how I want them to look. So I really love my Pit Artist Pens. And if you don't have any, I suggest you get some because they're awesome. You'll see that I go over where there's supposed to be color hitting me on the bike and I add some shades of pink just because I had a bicycle where there was pink on it. I don't remember where, but I don't think I had that bike at that age. I think it was when I was older, but I added it anyway just to show that there's color starting to hit the bike that wasn't on there when I was in the uh, gray evil place. <laughs> I also am going over a bit with a white gel pen, I think just to add that kind of shaded shadow. I also remembered I had this uh, dark purple, I don't know if it was stitching or maybe if it really was just that line look on those particular shorts, so I thought I'd go ahead and add that on there. Now I'm going over the building with my Pit Artist pen, and the uh, chameleon marker line art somehow decided just on that spot to smudge, which I was perfectly fine, fine with because it meant no shading for me, but it was weird because I used it on other areas and it didn't smudge like that. So like I said, this paper <laughs> is a little wacko, but I still love the sketchbook. I, I don't care how inconsistent it is. It leaves it leaves a mystery. It's always something new for me to find out <laughs> with this really interesting sketchbook. I'm also going on the side where I'm supposed to be coming into color. I used a sort of light um, beige-ish, grayish color just to add that kind of warmth, whereas on the side behind me, on my left, there's just gray. And I think that just adds a nice touch of me coming into this safer, warmer spot. I also kind of erase a bit of the pencil I had for just the geometric shapes on that wall with my kneaded eraser, and I started coloring it in. I wanted to do the big piece yellow, because yellow is my favorite col color, and I'm obsessed with yellow, so <laughs> you're going to see a lot of yellow people. Not in just this drawing, but in life. Oh, I forgot to mention there is a yellow notebook underneath my paper, and that's to make sure that I don't have any of the Copic sketch markers bleed on to the next paper. I don't... I know it's weird that I have a notebook for that, but it's just the first thing I used when I started using Copics, and it's just kind of become my go-to notebook, so... <laughs> 
there's that. I also added a bit of shading on just the left side of the windows. Well, not windows, uh, the geometric shapes. I suppose you could consider them windows, but I don't know. It could be just graffiti on a wall. We leave it to the imagination to decide what it is. I know what it is in my heart, but everyone can decide. I'm also just adding more details. I wanted to make sure it was really uh, a creative little wall to represent me just cycling into this beautiful creative world. I also added a bit of a kind of orangish yellow to the bottom and the side of the building just to give it more shading, give it a rendered look. Lastly, I signed my name on it and it was done. This is the drawing that represents how art has helped save my life. It's given me a sense of purpose and I know why I'm supposed to be here on earth. No one should ever think that they don't belong on earth. Everyone is born into this world for a reason. Don't ever think otherwise. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed hearing my story and I'm really excited about starting a art YouTube channel to share my art, my drawing experiences, and even stories just about my life to people who want to hear and want to learn. I hope I can teach you or just give you ideas and inspire you, but thank you for watching. Good luck in life and in art. Bye!